All right, so speaking of standards to support the interoperability, I will guide you through a quick introduction on ISO IEC 81346, which is an international uh, common standard between ISO and IEC, and we will get uh, to know the standard a little bit better and uh, to see the main features. I will cover these topics, that being a business oriented uh, asset model, what we mean by that, go through some of the basics in the standard, uh, but also touch on uh, common misconceptions and uh, kind of how how this standard can be an enabler in the interoperability field. But first, uh, a few words on on uh, where I come from. I work at a company called TCG, and uh, it is a consultancy firm focused on enabling insights in the field of asset information and asset management. The purpose of our mission is to uh, help organizations realize the potential in their asset information or in their asset data. And to do that, we have a, uh, a framework for information management uh, that is backed on methods and processes, uh, ownership and organization, information architecture and systems architecture, obviously. So what we do is uh, generate transformations where we start out uh, figuring out what needs to be done, uh, capturing the question and then defining a, a roadmap and then developing and implementing solutions and uh, obviously realizing the potential eventually. So with that said, asset information starts with the assets and we see the assets as the core of the business where asset information is uh, absolutely key to business support. This is illustrated by this uh, small figure up in the corner uh, that we've loaned from the Assets Management Institute. And I think any are familiar with it, but really what it states is that information about the assets is really what uh, enables operations and development of those assets. Obviously, this information is distributed in a lot of different systems and the way this information is organized will be uh, central to how the information can be shared across the platforms and used in uh, different scenarios and business uh, activities. So the challenge really is to find an asset model that supports all the business processes in the asset management. And the purpose of this is actually, as I said, to support the business processes in the asset management as defined, for instance, in uh, ISO 5500 and enable information management from an asset management perspective. Um, and the objective here is to describe all relevant assets, uh, all assets that we need to manage and need to describe them in a relevant way for all stakeholders. This has been done for a long time. I mean, this is not, nothing new, but traditionally every, every platform that we use for managing information about assets has kind of steered what kind of asset breakdown we, we can use, we can have. Uh, so traditionally we have alternate asset information models for various purposes, or various platforms, or various applications. So we have one in the project management platform, we have one in the maintenance platform, for instance, one in the GIS platform and so on. And really this challenges, obviously, the interoperability possibilities, uh, since every platform uses its own definitions of the assets. And what we want to find instead is a common uh, view on the assets and how they are organized and what they are composed of. And this common platform can then be shared across the different applications for different uses. But in the center is a common definition across all stakeholders and, and the IT platforms that everyone can agree on. Uh, so the requirements for such a, a business oriented asset model would be supporting all technical installations. I mean, mechanical pipes, uh, structures, uh, electrical installations, building structures, uh, communications equipment, so on, but also supporting all disciplines. I mean, by disciplines, we mean the, the actual processes of, of building and maintaining the electrical parts, the automation processes, uh, obviously the main production process, mechanical maintenance, building processes and so on. We also need to support varying level of detail uh, all the way from at the top, the, the management of the plant or the yeah the plant portfolio, actually down to the nuts and bolts. Also supporting information modeling and, and documentation, both traditional 
2D, so to speak, drawings and, and schematics, but also 3D models and um, more complex information models, also supporting the whole life cycle. And um, this standard ISO 81346 is a solution to this, this, this problem, being um, a very simple way of modeling the assets. Uh, it's not a complex um, information modeling scheme. It's a very simple scheme with one uh, kind of object relation only and, and one kind of objects. We only have uh, objects or systems and they they only have par uh, one parent, several ch children um, type of relations or part of hierarchies. Uh, and then we use four aspects, one at a time, plus one. Um, to, to express those relations. And um, uh, it's based on very generic technical classifications. It, it supports an infinite number of layers or, or level of detail. Um, as many business perspectives as you need, probably not an in infinite number, but still a lot. Um, uh, it's very communicable, people can understand it, and it's developable in the sense that um, it's principle based and then can be further developed as your need for information grow or as your requirements on how to organize information grow uh, in the future. <clears throat> and this is really uh, achieved by uh, very simple rules where you structure your assets saying that, well, we have this asset being a, for instance, a pump. It's part of a technical system, which is part of some other system which is part of a plant and the structure is really only expressed with the dots and uh, the prefix saying well this is an equal so it's a, a, a functional structure uh, and in my functional structure I have several uh, levels and each level represents some object or some technical system. Uh, then each system is defined by a class which is predefined uh, in tables, and then we have instances of those of those classes. So it's very. Um, this is pump number two, in technical system H A number twelve in technical system A one, in in the plant U twelve. That's it. And this um, this method can be applied on all kinds of uh, technical installations and and uh, follow a very simple a very simple grammar to identify basically any part of of the uh, of the plant um, and you express it in form of hierarchies like this so in this case um, every object in this kind of st stair hierarchy is an object of its own a system of its own and has a reference designation it has uh, you can complete um, the definition of this pump by also expressing it. For instance, the blue structure is a, a functional structure. You can express it in a product oriented structure. You can express it as a location and so on. Uh, and we have, um, and, and, and this results in reference designations at the object uh, level being, for instance, in this case, two rows. So both these two rows are reference designations for this object. Uh, one is as valid as the other. Um, we have four defined aspects and we have one free um, kind of hierarchy, uh, uh, hierarchy possibility that can be used as well. Uh, the, products, uh, the product aspect uh, defines what the, the plant consists of, uh, what is it built of, uh, regardless of where uh, where things are located or how they are physically or functionally connected. This is generally kind of shallow structure, but very generic and very objective. Then we have the, the function um, aspect, which is very subjective on the other hand and uh, um, expresses a, a need or a purpose in the business. So you would typically have several function um, structures, one uh, corresponding to each business need you need to describe. Then you have locations, uh, location oriented structures, um, expressing where things are located in relation to other stuff or kind of more globally. And then you have the type expressing 
uh, different variants of, of the object. You can say that if you have one pump, it might be of one variant, for instance, centrifugal, whereas an, a pump in, in some other facility or some other place might be of another, of another kind, still a pump, but of another variant, and then you have a, a variant structure. Uh, obviously, you can use the, the free structure or the free um, uh, reference model for expressing, or several free reference models for expressing other stuff, like, for instance, uh, uh, other kind of uh, literary or or um, or uh, steering um, uh, or or um, uh, power supply or uh, other uh, communications, other kind of relations you, you need to express. Um, so, for instance, one object might be uh, expressed with up to, let's say, ten or or eight uh, different reference models, all. Uh, as relevant as the other. Uh, all, uh, most objects are not represented in all structures at once because it, it doesn't make sense. A door in a room might be interesting for some uh, uh, parts of the business, but this door has no uh, purpose being expressed in, for instance, a, a process function or something like that. Um, so what you end up is end up with is um, an object model where Objects are uh, entities in in your asset uh, portfolio that you want to describe. For instance, in this class, in this case, a room, and you need to express where this room is. For instance, maybe on the second floor. Um, that can be expressed in one a topological location structure. You could also express it as what room is this for? This being, for instance, a pumping room. Um, and, and now you're expressing the purpose of this room, uh, which has nothing to do with where it's actually located. Then um, that would result in another kind of uh, uh, object definition. Within this pumping room, you would typically find a pump, and this pump um, is defined in a yet another uh structure where you want to express the purpose of this uh this equipment for instance being a part of a pumping system being part of some other uh technical application and for each object you will you will get reference designations and uh, for very complex uh parts of the of of your asset or your plant you will have many rows of reference designation codes expressing uh, uh, or defining these objects. So <clears throat> what you do really is to break down your reality into an object model of instances, uh, not only classes that you say, yes, I have pumps and, and uh, 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 pumps and conveyor belts, but you say I have this pump, pump number one, pump number two, and conveyor belt one, conveyor belt two, and so on. So it's instances of of classes, actually, as explained earlier. Uh, but the standard uh, will only get you to what we call the object level. The actual equipment type and the actual individual are not covered by this standard. You need other uh, ways of expressing those relations. Uh, so the standard will give you reference designations for all objects in your plant uh, down to this level. Uh, and really the object model of instances is, is or becomes or is an answer to the need of a business process oriented asset model because you can express all parts of the of your assets uh, with with the with the um, use of of the same grammar but different kind of vocabulary uh, for all business needs, so you can express it as many ways as you as you want uh, for all stakeholders that you want. Uh, but typically, you you will end up with a couple of lines of RDS codes, like two or three, or for very complex objects, maybe four. So some misconceptions then. Um, many believe that eight one three four six dictates strict levels of of uh, defining the assets being, for instance, one pl a plant, main systems and technical systems and components, like for instance, four, four levels. That is absolutely not true. You design as you like, you design as many levels as uh, as you need. 
and this uh, obviously enables you to express or break down a small pumping station in your network as well as a major plant uh, because you can go as as deep or as or as shallow as you need uh, another common misconception is that there's only three reference models one function oriented one product oriented and one location oriented this is absolutely not true either as i said probably you would have one product oriented reference model but then you would need at least two function oriented uh, if you have uh, a complex enough uh, business most of the time you have both some kind of uh, infrastructure as a house or something and you have also stuff in your houses you have process equipment uh, being part of a process that is completely different from the building process uh, you need to be able to express that and then you will have also uh, one or several location uh, aspects also uh, or one or several location um, uh, reference models i'm sorry uh, another misconception is that the product aspect uh, equals individuals and equipment types. This is not true. The product aspect is uh, an aspect in the modeling uh, principle that only explains how stuff are put together. So items and equipment is not covered by ISO EC 81346. Um, <clears throat> another common misconception is the use of reference designations as object IDs. And this is very not practical uh, because Obviously, your object will have several reference designation codes uh, for several reference models. And as the name implies, it's a reference model. It's not a, a global uh, global ID uh, that is to be used in, in, in many applications. Uh, it can be a great reference, uh, but as an ID, you need to figure something else out. Um, and then some people say, uh, come to say, yeah, well, we've based our modeling on uh, parts of the 81346 standard series. Um, and then uh, I'd like to uh, express a warning regarding this because the standard really is is a whole. And if you put if you pick cherries out of this, this cake, you will probably uh, do stuff that is not really supported by the standard and you will end up with creating a mess. So either you follow the standard or either you make something up on your own. Uh, it's my recommendation. So what is it? What is it used for then? Well, it's it's used for modeling assets in a very uh, easy uh, in one way, uh, easy way, um, because obviously the model gets kind of complex, but it's very easy to make up. And this enables communication uh especially within the engineering and the information exchange so uh it's it's a great tool to express what the assets are made of uh how they are connected uh purpose-wise and technical technically and um, uh, and and really this is an enabler for the interoperability uh cause in the way that it's one very a distinct way of expressing what kind of assets we have, what kind of assets we don't have, and and that is really key to to be um, uh, to have a common ground regarding the view on what assets we have and not. Uh, so for uh, for an asset in an asset definition uh, purpose, this is a a, a great tool. Uh, that was basically it, um, covering the 81346 standard series, um, the common ISO EC standard uh, for uh, asset breakdown. Thank you very much.